Imagine living in an era when your refrigerator is a large block of ice, and every day you still have to get milk at the milk door. How wonderful that would be. Today, let's together stroll down memory lane and admire 15 features of old homes that have become part of history. Milk Doors In antiquated residences, milk doors served as a clever feature designed for the seamless delivery of daily milk. In an era predating widespread refrigerator ownership, the majority of households relied on the convenient delivery of fresh milk directly to their doorstep. These compact, two-way insulated doors were ingeniously integrated into the walls of homes and apartments. The milkman would deposit the milk into these recessed compartments from outside, allowing residents to retrieve it from the interior without venturing outside. This system proved highly practical as it safeguarded the milk from both animals and potential theft, presenting a convenient solution for homeowners. Milk doors held significant importance in an era when modern supermarkets and refrigeration had yet to revolutionize daily life, offering a streamlined approach to obtaining fresh dairy. Coal chutes. Integral to numerous Victorian residences, especially in the era preceding widespread electricity use, were coal chutes. Typically constructed from metal and situated in the foundation wall, these chutes featured a hinged door leading to an inclined tunnel where coal trucks deposited the week's fuel. The coal, once delivered, would be emptied into a designated room adjacent to the basement furnace, leaving enduring black stains on the walls of these spaces. For homes lacking a coal chute, the transportation of coal involved manual labor, with workers known as lumpers using wheelbarrows or bags. In more affluent households, a contraption known as the Riley Stoker streamlined the process, conveying coal directly from a hopper to the furnace, eliminating the need for manual shoveling. Picture rails. In antiquated homes, picture rails emerged as a clever and stylish method for displaying artwork. These rails, strips of molding positioned near the ceiling along the walls, provided a practical solution for hanging pictures. Individuals utilized hooks and wires to suspend their artwork from these rails, eliminating the need to puncture holes in the plaster walls that were prone to damage. Beyond their practicality, Picture rails contributed a decorative element to the rooms, enhancing the overall aesthetics. Particularly popular in homes constructed during the 19th and early 20th centuries, picture rails exemplify how individuals from that era seamlessly blended utility with a keen sense of style in their home decor. Parlor Room during the 18th and 19th centuries, possessing a parlor within one's residence served as a symbol of elevated social standing. The parlor functioned as the designated space where families would receive guests, showcasing their finest furniture and art. Renowned as the premier room in the house due to its exquisite decor, this area played a pivotal role in hosting significant family occasions such as weddings, births, and funerals. To maintain its pristine condition and readiness for visitors, the parlor was often kept closed when not in use, adorned with comfortable chairs, a sofa, and occasionally a piano for musical ambience. The parlor underwent a transformation over time. With the evolution of homes incorporating televisions and other entertainment, the parlor gradually became less prevalent eventually evolving into what we now commonly refer to as the living room. Ice boxes. Prior to the advent of electric refrigerators, ice boxes were commonplace household appliances employed for refrigerating food. Also known as cold closets, these non-mechanical refrigerators gained popularity in the early 20th century. 
The mechanism involved placing a substantial ice block in the top compartment with the resulting cold air circulating downward to maintain the lower compartment's cool temperature. Crafted with hollow walls lined in materials like tin or zinc, these ice boxes were filled with insulating substances such as cork, sawdust, or straw. Maintenance required regular replacement of melted ice, often accomplished by purchasing new ice from an ice man. The ice box's design facilitated extended storage of perishable foods, eliminating the need for additional preservation methods like smoking or drying. Knob and tube wiring, a vintage electrical approach. Utilized in buildings from the 1880s to the 1930s, knob and tube wiring represented an early method of electrical installation. This system featured single insulated copper conductors threading through wall or ceiling spaces, secured by porcelain insulating tubes and knobs. Its popularity stemmed from cost effectiveness compared to contemporary alternatives. However, shortcomings such as the absence of a safety grounding conductor and vulnerability to mechanical damage were evident. As household electrical needs grew over time, the inadequacies of knob and tube wiring became apparent, leading to its obsolescence. In the present day, this method is largely relegated to history, replaced by more modern and secure electrical wiring systems. Transom Windows Transom windows, commonly located above doors in many historic structures, were particularly prevalent before the widespread adoption of air conditioning and heating systems. Serving a dual purpose, these windows allowed for effective ventilation by opening to let in fresh air while maintaining the security of the room. Positioned higher up, they not only facilitated increased natural light intake but also preserved privacy. Operating these windows required specialized tools known as transom operators. Beyond their functional benefits, transom windows contribute a distinctive architectural charm to buildings. Servants' Quarters In expansive residences, servants' quarters served as dedicated spaces where the household staff both resided and carried out their duties. This architectural feature was prevalent from the late 17th century to the early 20th century. Typically situated in the basements and attics of smaller houses, these quarters found their place in larger residences as separate wings or blocks. The underlying concept was to maintain proximity to the areas where servants were required while simultaneously keeping them discreetly removed from the main sections of the house. The significance of servants' quarters lies in their ability to provide insights into historical living arrangements. These spaces highlight the socio-economic disparities between the affluent homeowners and their domestic staff, illustrating how these dynamics evolved over the course of time. Wash Basins In an era predating widespread indoor plumbing, the indispensable elements for personal hygiene in homes were wash basins and pitchers. The wash stand, typically crafted from wood such as mahogany or walnut, served as a designated piece of furniture to house these essential items. This small table or cabinet supported by legs was purpose-built to accommodate a wash basin and a water pitcher. As part of the daily routine, Individuals utilized these basins and pitchers for washing up in the morning or before retiring for the night. This ritual persisted until the advent of sinks and running water becoming standard fixtures in homes. With the evolution of indoor plumbing, the necessity for wash stands and pitchers diminished over time, rendering them less prevalent in contemporary households. Butler's Pantry Historically, particularly in expansive residences during the 19th and early 20th centuries, the butler's pantry held a pivotal role within the home. Positioned as a distinctive room or space connecting the kitchen and dining area, 
Its primary function was the storage and preparation of meals for service. Within the butler's pantry, essential items such as silverware, china, and large serving dishes found their designated places. Additionally, tasks like cleaning silver and conducting item inventories were carried out in this specialized area. In some households, the butler even utilized the pantry as a sleeping quarters to ensure the security of valuable silverware. Presently, butlers' pantries maintain their appeal in certain homes, often serving as a practical hub for meal arrangement and the storage of dining-related items. Dumbwaiters, compact freight elevators employed for transporting various items, particularly food, between different floors and buildings, gained significant popularity. While initially prevalent in multi-story homes, they continue to be utilized in contemporary structures such as restaurants and schools. Before the incorporation of electric motors in the 1920s, these contraptions operated manually through the use of ropes and pulleys. The late 19th century invention of the mechanical dumbwaiter by George W. Cannon marked a significant milestone in their development. Engineered to be more petite and less robust than passenger elevators, these devices typically handled loads of a few hundred pounds. Dumbwaiters played a crucial role in facilitating the movement of laundry, food, and other items, streamlining the process of transporting goods within expansive homes and buildings. Laundry Chute If your bedroom is two floors up from the washer and dryer, you might want to resurrect another nearly forgotten feature of old homes, the laundry chute. If you'd like to construct your own to ensure that your clothes are funneled smoothly, weld sheet metal together to create a ramp, or use lengths of extra-large PVC pipe to form a tube that ends in your laundry room. No matter your approach, adding a laundry chute injects low-tech convenience into one of life's never-ending chores. Boot Scrapers when horse-drawn wagons were a common mode of transportation, a boot scraper at the front door was a real necessity. As paved roads replaced dirt and tires replaced hooves, the boot scraper fell out of use. Today, you can still find the traditional style cast iron bars set into masonry on many front stoops, although many modern wood, rubber, or plastic scrapers have been augmented with brushes to remove debris from all angles. Sleeping porches. Sleeping porches became popular in the 20th century when they were advocated by health professionals who believed that the fresh air they provided bolstered immune systems. Such porches were already popular in the South and West where sleeping outdoors was cooler and more comfortable. Phone nook. Back when telephones were large and unwieldy, Homes often had a special nook to accommodate the bulky devices. Although the size of these cumbersome antiques is what necessitated their having their own hole in the wall, designating a dedicated space for a telephone doesn't seem like such a bad idea, even today. After all, most of us spend the last five minutes before leaving the house screaming, where's my cell phone? 